As you can see, this is a new era for Star Wars and Lucasfilm, with expanded opportunities for continued innovation, high quality storytelling and cinematic experiences like never before. What's up all my Ewoks, Jewels, Droids, and Wookiees, it's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today I am going to be talking about all of this, all of the new shows that came out that were announced on Disney's Investor Day. Now I did sit through and watch the entire thing. It was a lot, a lot of information, uh, over a hundred titles announced, and then at the end with the Q&A they, you know, dodged all the questions. So just looking at this, and how many Star Wars shows are actually coming out. So this is just uh, these Star Wars shows individually. And then this is everything that Lucasfilm is producing. Because as you can see, there are a few titles on here that are not uh, related to Star Wars. But so I'm just looking at this and thinking to myself, huh, it's ironic, isn't it? That uh, 2019, so last year, last year, Bob Iger, when he was CEO of Disney, did this interview with the New York Times where, you know, this, this quote came from a uh, Star Wars, I just think that we might have put a little bit too much in the marketplace too fast. Now, this was an excuse for why Solo lost money, why Solo was such a huge failure, and why, you know, all of their projections for the sequel trilogy, you know, they when they built, you know, Star Wars Land, Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Disney World, they made it all revolve around the sequels. Nobody gave a shit, nobody cares. What do people say when they go, where's Luke? Where's Leia? Where's Baby Yoda? Where are all these things? And it's like, oh, no, no, no. It it's the sequels, it's back to nobody cares. Nobody cares because Soylo lost money because it sucked and the sequels sucked, lost money. So Bob Iger's excuse for that was, no, 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 they don't suck. It's just Star Wars fatigue. People are exhausted from Star Wars. Huh, what happened to that fatigue, Bobby? What happened to it? Because then just looking at this, and this is why I think there's more merit to that, is that do you, do you see anything that's revolving around the sequel trilogy? Like, you would think if the sequels were so successful, right, that they would have spinoff shows, that there would be, I don't know, they freaking need to do a, a Ray or explaining where the fuck her training was. But um, apparently just her floating and doing rocks in the, you know, the fall of the fucking franchise. Um, you know, that, that apparently... You know, everything that they did, they didn't even mention in the shareholder meeting, by the way, when Kathleen Kennedy was going and saying, oh, yeah, look at the success of The Mandalorian. She didn't even talk about the shows that failed. She didn't talk about that terribly animated Star Wars show that I used to watch that, you know, blew my brains and I lost brain cells every single time I watched it uh, that got canceled after two seasons because it was terrible and nobody liked it. Nobody watched it and nothing in it made sense. Oh, they're not talking about that. They're talking about The Mandalorian. That's the big highlight is the success of The Mandalorian. And because of the success of The Mandalorian, they are going to do more shows, more spinoff shows. Like for instance, uh, Rangers of the New Republic. That's the one that everyone is, you know, theorizing that that's the one that Cara Dune's character, you know, Gina Carano, she's getting her own spinoff. Uh, that, that's it's just rumors though because they didn't officially say anything about her being in it i think that they're waiting until the mandalorian uh you know final uh because that's going to be out this week that they are waiting until that to do like the big reveal oh yay gina ground is getting her own spin off and then of course they have the ahsoka and so basically season two of the mandalorian because of the success of season one because of this little guy right behind me uh they decided, oh, yeah, so people do like Star Wars. Okay, so what do people like? What do we, what do actually make money? Because guess what? Right now it's COVID. They're losing money because they're not, you know, banking on all of the income that the parks bring them because California, Disneyland, parks closed. Florida opened back up, but a majority of their freaking revenue comes from the parks. And so the fact that those were closed for so long, they're losing money left and right. So they can't pander to the people that they have been pandering to ever since they, you know, acquired Star Wars. The fact that they've been just destroying Star Wars and shitting on Star Wars and the legacy that George Lucas left, they can't do that anymore or else, you know, 
that, you know, if you want to burn money, all right, which is what they've been doing. But, you know, now they're seeing that they can't, they can't afford to lose money. So what are they doing? That's successful. Okay, we're going off of that. We're not going to go off the sequel trilogy because guess what? Raylos can scream at the top of the lungs as much as they want. The, the You know, the Disney shills can scream at the top of the lungs as much as they want. But guess what? Which ones are getting spinoffs and, you know, shows about? It's not the sequel trilogy. <laughs> so, you know, they see Ahsoka as successful. Or so Ahsoka is a popular character, especially since they did season seven of The Clone Wars. So what are they going to do? Give her own show. Basically, all of season two of Mando was introducing characters for spinoffs. So we got Rangers, Cara Dune. We got Ahsoka. Obviously, Ahsoka probably going to go, you know, bring Sabine in. I think that's why they haven't announced who that or who the actress is going to be for Sabine. That's why they haven't shown her yet, because I think that's going to be one of the big announcements. And one of the draws in for the show is that they they said Thrawn in Mando season two when we had the Ahsoka episode. So we know Ahsoka is still on the mission at the end of Rebels looking for Thrawn. Maybe Sabine's off on some other mission. They're probably going to, you know, announce a, a couple of names for Ezra. Who's going to play Ezra? Who's going to play Thrawn? Because that was Ahsoka and uh, Sabine's mission was to go find Ezra and Thrawn. So that'll be the whole thing on that show is her trying, her and Sabine trying to find Thrawn. Thrawn and Ezra are somewhere in the galaxy. We got Andor. We know what that's going to be about. It's going to be the prequel to Rogue One about casting Andor. It's going to be a spy movie. And the, the dude that did, oh my God, the Tom Cruise movies, I'm blanking on him. Everyone's going to let me know in the comment. Uh, but So we got the director that did the Tom Cruise spy movies. What Mission Impossible. There we go. Yes, Mission Impossible. I don't know why I was blanking on that one. So he's coming in to direct it. It's going to be uh, Mon Mothma is going to be in it. I wonder, and I'm of course I'm blanking on his name as well, the actor that played uh, Bail Organa because he was in Rogue One. So maybe he's going to be brought in. I I guarantee you they'll probably have Ahsoka in that one too. And I feel like it's just going to be a bunch of crossovers. And, you know, they're having their own. It, honestly, it's kind of like the way the CW does with all of the DC shows. You got that superhero, they got that superhero, they got that superhero. But they all exist in the same world. And so they'll have like big crossover episodes. But Ahsoka, uh, I don't... I the whole canon thing is a whole jumble fuck disaster. So in the Ahsoka book... Spoiler alert if you haven't read it. At the end of it, Ahsoka ends up working for Bail Organa and doing missions for the Rebel Alliance. So she's got ties to the Cassian Andor show. So will they do a crossover episode? Maybe. And it'll show her, obviously, she's going to have to be, you know, a little bit, uh, it'll change up her costume and her age maybe for the differences between the two shows. But there you go. Crossover episodes. Uh, obviously, there'll be crossovers between Rangers and Ahsoka and the freaking Mandalorian. All of these can be done. Uh, then we got the Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I feel like this is going to be the most controversial one because they announced that uh, Hayden Christensen was coming back to reprise his role as Darth Vader. And my theory on how that would work was, okay, maybe when Vader is in his little chamber, you know, the only room where he's able to take off the mask and they'll show Hayden and they'll have the prosthetics and, you know, the makeup on him. So that way it shows them all burn. And the only thing that I can think of to make it work without fucking up the original trilogy would be is if they're having flashbacks or Vader's reflecting and, you know, um, Obi-Wan is reflecting when he's on Tatooine and thinking about, oh, this is a time that I should have, you know, really seen that Anakin was, you know, you know, being tempted by the dark side, but I didn't. And so flashbacks, that's the only way I think it could work. But Kathleen Kennedy herself said, oh, there's going to be the biggest showdown that everyone's been waiting for. And it's like, fuck you. Fuck you. Because guess what? That takes away all of the meaning, all of the impact from their, you know, reu when they reunite in, uh, you know, the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope, when they reunite, Darth Vader says, I feel in, I felt a presence I have not felt since. And he realizes Obi-Wan is alive. They face off and he's like, you know, once you, you know, I was just a student. Now I am the master and they fight. And that's like the big showdown because Darth Vader didn't know he was alive. So if they have them fight again and it's not some weird kind of, you know, flashback memory, then it's going to fuck up. The original is going to take all the impact away from that scene. So pretty controversial show that I, you know, are their announcement. If it is just, uh, what another theory I had was maybe it's like one of the, they tried to get the Force Dyad thing. You know, oh, Ray and Kylo Ren, it's a Force Dyad. That's why they can Force Skype call. Da, da, da. Okay. So maybe if Obi-Wan is, you know, reflecting or dreaming or doing some kind of, um, you know, Force meditation and Anakin is, you know, Vader, he's in his little, re um, 
rehabilitation little chamber and maybe they're doing the same thing they're both meditating and it's like some kind of dyad so they fight but they they both think it's like a flashback or a memory or a fantasy that's the only way i can see it working without fucking with the originals but that's just a theory i guarantee you they're not going to do any of that because disney don't think uh we got the bad batch which are you know the clones that are a bad batch that you know are not uh the, the perfect clones uh that were introduced in the clone war season seven so they're gonna do a whole show about that i don't really have a problem with that I like the animated shows. I hope Katie Lucas is writing them though. Oh, we got Star Wars Visions. Now this one, I think I am the most optimistic for. This is going to be Star Wars anime. And it's going to bring in different, you know, an, uh, you know, famous anime writers and directors to do little short films of, you know, in the Star Wars universe, but an, in anime. So that one I think has the most potential for, you know, bringing something new to the table that's, you know, creatively inspiring that also will not fuck with anything. So this in and of itself, I know a lot of people are like, oh, we're not interested in this at all. I'm like, no, no, no. This is the best thing that they've shown us that it's like, they're not fucking with anything. They're just trying to do stories, you know, in the Star Wars universe, but with, you know, a different art style and, and new imaginations. So that one, I'm like, all right, do your own thing. Okay, that that I'm the most optimistic about them not destroying anything I loved. We got Rogue Squadrons, which is going to be one of the new Star Wars films. This is the one that is going to be directed by Patty Jenkins, the woman that directed Wonder Woman. So uh, I, I found this a uh, little, uh, not this one. Uh, okay, I found this a little interesting. So uh, back 2019, Baba Iger did the interview with New York Times. And so I have this up because it's a, it's a long article. It's a mess to find. So this was one of the things that Bob Iger had said. I wonder if there will ever be a female director for Star Wars, he says to Kathleen Kennedy, head of Lucasfilm, is trying really hard to make it happen. So, uh, you know, it's, it's funny that he said that back in 2019, almost as if they knew, almost as if that they had this planned and the whole Star Wars fatigue was bullshit. That that was just their excuse for why Disney, the sequels, and Soylo lost money and why they are failing. Why they failed to connect with fans. Why in, you know, a year from now, two years from now. I mean, even after the movie came out, it's real that nobody cares about it anymore. There's the real Raylos, but even they pissed them off. So it, it's funny. Star Wars fatigue. But you had, you had this in the works. You had this in the works, Disney. And don't even try to give me that, oh, this is a brand new revelation. No. These things take years, years to get through, you know, the chopping blocks, to go through scripts, to go through, you know, people approving this kind of stuff. This has been years in the making. So when Bob Iger said this quote, they already knew. So don't even give me this shit about Star Wars fatigue. It was 100% a cover up for why Soylo lost money and why the Disney sequel trilogy failed to connect with audiences because it sucks. Then we got... Uh, Lando, uh, by the guy that directed Dear White People, which was hilarious to see Kathleen Kennedy say with a straight face. Uh, I really don't have any interest in them fucking up Lando even more. Now he's a pansexual that fucks robots. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, this wasn't made for me. Uh, they do not have it on here, but they also announced uh, the Taika Waititi, you know, Disney Star Wars movie, which I'm like... Everyone's like, oh, he's funny. He can do this. And then other people are like, no, screw him. I'm more on the fence of this is the guy that told a fan that, oh, you don't know what you want until I tell you what I want or until I tell you what you want. And then the guy that's, you know, tweeting at fans, I'll destroy your mythos in a minute, baby, about those were tweets in response to Thor, Love and Thunder. Doesn't seem very promising, so I'm very, very skeptical about that project. And then last but not least, we have the Acolyte. Now, this is going to be a series. The, the, this is the Leslie Headland female-centric Star Wars show. So this is the only one that doesn't have to do with the prequels or the originals. This one is set at the end of the High Republic era, the, you know, the Disney's new young adult novels that are supposed to, you know, fix basically The Last Jedi and the hyperspace kamikaze incident that Ryan Johnson decided to create since he doesn't know anything about Star Wars, doesn't know anything about how hyperspace travel works in the Star Wars universe. So uh, they're doing 
doing that because there's going to be some kind of accident to explain Ryan Johnson's fuck up. And so this is actually going to be a care. I'm assuming a female since it's a female centric Star Wars show that Leslie Headland, Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, is directing and, you know, working on. And so it's going to be about, you know, the dark side. And I am assuming uh, somebody, a, a girl getting tempted by the dark side and becoming an acolyte to a Sith Lord. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, uh, Star Wars fatigue my fucking ass, Bob Iger. This is the biggest cop-out and excuse in the world for why Soylo lost money and why, you know, your sequel trilogy just failed to connect with audience and failed, absolutely failed to undo everything that Kathleen Kennedy wanted to undo and to destroy Lucas's legacy. So uh, fuck that. Star Wars fatigue my ass. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. Let me know if, are, if you are interested in any of these shows, and if so, which ones, and which ones you're you know not interested in at all. I think I'm going to do individual videos on every single one. The next one after this video will definitely be about the Obi Wan because I got a lot to say on that, and I felt like it would be too long to do in this uh, individual video. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Smash the like button if you are not subscribed. Take a minute to subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. That way you actually get notified notification when I put out other videos and live streams. And until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I have an Etsy store, so if you've ever wanted to own a print of my artwork, this is the place to go. As you can see, I have a lot of recognizable characters, from horror films, to heroes, to Star Wars characters. Some of the notable characters I have on here are Darth Vader, which I did a couple live streams painting, so you can own a print of this painting. I also have Luke Skywalker, the binary sunset version, one of my favorite scenes in the original New Hope movie. I have Darth Maul, which Ray Parks himself actually complimented me on Instagram. And then last but certainly not least, Ahsoka Tano. So if you want to own any of these prints, go right on over to my Etsy store. Again, that's the art of Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. What's up everyone? I have a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799817. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.